Hi, this is Ed from Exotic Blanks. We're going to do something a little different today. We're going to talk about the skew, except we're going to go a little bit more in detail and you're seeing it from a different angle. You are over my left shoulder off to the to the headstock side of the lathe. What we want to talk about here is obviously this is a skew. And the way that a skew can become scary is when it gets a catch. So let's look at what makes a skew catch. The lathe is off, there's no damage that can be done here. But if we were turning, we'd be going back and forth like this. That won't hurt anything. What creates a skew catch is when this corner and that corner hit the blank at the same time. If that happens, then it tries to go down into that crack between the two, between the tool rest and the blank, and that's what your catch is. The back end tries to go up, and it's scary as it can be. So that's how you get a catch. So what can we do to make that less likely? Well, here I have a half inch skew. As you see, I can put this like this, and it is pretty close to the position it needs to be in in order to make this thing catch. Here I have a slightly larger tool. This is an inch and an eighth. Now if I take that and go back and forth across here, how in the world am I going to make both ends of this thing hit at the same time? So the point is, the larger your tool is, the less likely you are to have a catch. You really have to be a long ways up from here to here. This is where you should be cutting. This is where you end up cutting. You really screwed up. So let's go back to an in-between tool, three-quarter inch, which is what I like to turn with most of the time. We'll turn the lathe on, turn the speed up because it's easier to do it fast than it is to do it slow. Now what you'll see here is that I am turning with the lower portion of that skew and my tool rest is approximately equal to the center of my turning object. Now if I continue to do that very gently, you don't hear much and that means that I'm cutting and taking off the material in ribbons. If instead I get some vibration, you can see here that I have screwed it up, which was what I was hoping to do. Right across the edge there, let's get a little closer. Now you can see that there are all kinds of little chip marks along here. That's where I was getting vibration. In here, I was not getting vibration. Okay, so now let's go back to doing some turning. Again, I'm at the center. And you can hear that I'm just taking off material. I'm not shattering. And there I am shattered. And there you will see that it's got those chatter marks again. So what do we do when we have the chatter marks? 
for one thing, we can tighten, and in this case I can feel it's right, you can tighten your tailstock. We're not trying to pinch that so we bow the We're not trying to pinch that so we bow the uh, mandrel. We're just trying to hold it so that it's steady. It doesn't rock back and forth. And now when I go across there, there is no vibration and so I can take off those marks that I made. The other thing is you can go in the opposite. Again, I'm I'm turning this, I'm putting the pressure toward the headstock. I am not pushing into it, I'm pushing this direction. That makes all the difference in the world. That's what keeps you from having a lot of shatter. You're trying to shave off pieces. You're not trying to see if you can push it into the blank. It's easier to go less distance than it is to go more distance. So it's easier to go from one end toward the, from slightly toward the end over to the end. In other words, less distance. If I started here and tried to go all the way across, it becomes difficult to stay steady the whole direction. If I start here, it's much easier. And again, everything is being supported by my finger. This finger goes back and forth on the tool rest. The only thing the tool does, it's trapped between my finger and my thumb. It's going to go where I tell it to go. So I try to keep it at a reasonable angle. I like to use long edge down when I'm going this direction, but it doesn't make a world of difference. See, when you're not hearing anything, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're cutting off the material. You're not making any noise at all. Because of the static, it's hard to get all those little pieces off. But there are no chips in there. I have radial tool marks, but I have no chips, and those radial tool marks will sand out very easily. So that's all there is to using the SKU. I hope this helped those of you who are having some problems, and feel free to send messages to me or to let me know if you have comments. I'm always happy to try to see if I can make it a little better the next time. Again, this is Ed from Exotic Blanks. Thanks for watching. Bye now.